Right, if you have your Bibles with you, Judges chapter 15. Judges 15, verse 18 to verse 20. Judges 15, 18 to 20. 15 is 1 5, not 16. Judges 15, 18 to 20. And he was so a test and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given me this great deliverance. Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for test? And fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. But God clave an hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again. And he revived, wherefore he called the name thereof Enakor, which is in Lehi. Unto this day. Verse 20. And he judged Israel. In the days of. Philistine. 20 years. I cannot die like this. Tell someone. I cannot die like this. I don't know about you. But it's a prophecy for me. And for everyone who is ready for it. I cannot die like this. You could, you could do that better if you could tell somebody on your left and right, just two people, tell them, I cannot die like this. Now, now, one of the things, a privilege you get when you're in the church of the word is when you have a preacher who doesn't just teach you the things of the spirit, but teaches you the ways of life. Because we are spiritual beings, but we live in mortality. We are spiritual beings, but we live in mortality. So we need to understand the ways of life, what is obtainable in life. Or else, you will only be a spiritual person and carry an afflicted body. Because you do not understand the workings of life. The place where we read, something got to a point where he had killed so much people, about a thousand people, one man. And after he killed them, he was thirsty. And he asked the Lord, can I die now? Can I die like this? But before we get to that spot, it's good to follow the trajectory, the story, so that we get a proper understanding of how we got to that point and we take it again after that point. Is that okay? Is that okay? The story of Samson, we all know Samson. Samson was a prophetic child. There are three children or three kids, whatever you call them, whose birth we have predicted before they were born. Only three. The first is Isaac. Before Isaac was born, there was a prophetic word that he was going to be born. Isaac was born. Abraham was asking God concerning Eleazar, who was his servant, if he was going to become the heir. God said, no, I will give you a nation. Abraham was asking God for a child, and God was talking about a nation. The second was what we just saw, Samson. Samson was a prophetic child, and the third, is John the Baptist. Jesus is the prophecy of scripture so we cannot include him to the bed of mortality because he's the prophecy of scripture. John the Baptist was also prophesied before John came when the father opened his mouth and said it's not possible for the child to be born. So God said this kind of mouth can give a woman miscarriage. She will shut up. So God made him dumb. Just imagine what was an affliction to a father was a miracle to a son. A son was born, a father was dumb. Amen? Sometimes the will of God can be painful. People think that the will of God means the, pleasure, <laughs> means the pleasure of God. No, the will of God can be painful. When you are in the will of God, the perfect will of God, you can feel pain, you will shed tears. Yet you are in the will of God. Amen? So Samson was prophesied that Samson was going to be born. So Samson was born. And Samson was a great child. A wonderful child. But the place where we read now, we discover that Samson returned so his father-in-law's house, if you read from chapter, um, verse 1 of chapter 15, he returned to his father-in-law's house 
and brought a kid. He came to reconcile because he had a clash with the woman that he married. I'll tell you the story of the clash. He had a clash and a problem with the woman that he married. So from verse 1, he returned. And Samson was such a useless person with this intention. Samson did not return because he missed his wife. He returned because he wanted to go to her bedroom. Samson missed the wife's bedroom. And the Bible was very, very definite. Bring up verse 1. The Bible was very definite about it. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. The kid was a, a, a pastor for reconciliation. And he said, I will go into my wife, into the chamber. See why he came. But her father would not. Okay, bring out that translation so that you understand it better. Bring out that translation. Bring out that translation. Are you scared? Later on, it was during the wheat harvest, Samson visited his bride, bringing young goat. He said, let me see my wife. Show me her bedroom. Okay, you agree now, right? But her, <laughs> her father wouldn't let him. Or another translation. Another translation. After a while, in the time of wheat harvest, Samson visited his wife, went to visit his wife with a young goat as a gift. Is that what I told you? Of reconciliation. And he said, I will go into my wife in her room. But her father will not allow. Now let me tell you the story. Samson, in chapter 14, found a woman in the land of the Philistines. And said, I, go, I like this woman. I told her parents, I like this woman. I want to marry her. And when Samson was going, he saw a lion. He killed the lion. The father was shocked. When he had killed the lion, the lion's carcass was left there. When he was coming back, he found honey. The lion carcass had produced honey. Samson was excited. He took part of it, gave to his parents to eat. He ate part of it. And he was trying to ask them, how do you think I got this honey? Nobody could testify. Nobody could say because he was alone there. And Samson said, he put up a riddle among the Philistines, among his in-laws. He said, in seven days, whoever can tell me how I got this honey, I will do this and this for them. And everyone was wondering, how did he get the honey? Samson only told one person, and that was his wife. This is how I got the honey. And the people, the wife's family, put pressure. The people of the land of Philistine put pressure on that woman and said to the woman, if you don't tell us the secret of that riddle, we will burn you and your father's house down. She was under threat. Under serious threat. If you read chapter 14, down to verse 15, they threatened to burn down her father's house and burn her and her father down. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, entice that her husband may declare unto us, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have you called us so that we, us to take that which we have? Is it not so? And the woman began to cry. Emotional. She cried. She wept before him. You hate me. You don't love me. You put forth a riddle. You didn't tell me. After the pressure, Samson told her. And she told the people. When she told the people, Samson was embarrassed because they gave him the answer. So Samson was grieved. And Samson left the wife's house and went back to his father's house. I, I like those kind of marriage. It is the man that lives. It was, <laughs> it was Samson that left. Now, this is the, 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 this is the takeaway from it. Samson's wife was pressured. Call it blackmail. Her father's house was under threat. Her life was under threat. And she did what she did. Samson was angry. And he went back to his father's house. Sometimes the intensity of our anger is that we focus on people's action, not what led to their action. You are angry, you are upset, you are grieved that this person said this or did this or did that without being calm enough to find out why did they do that. Your pain and the intensity of your heart we reduce if you inquire what led to that hurt. If Samson had 
been aware that the wife was under life and death, he would not have reacted the way he reacted. Your husband said this. Your husband did this. Your wife did this. Your wife did that. You are angry. Your husband is doing this. Your wife is doing this. Your children are doing Have you asked them why are you doing this? So you focus on the outcome without asking them questions on the process. When you see outcome, please inquire of the process. When you understand why things are the way they are, why somebody walked away from that business, somebody dropped a resignation letter, somebody chose not to work anymore, a driver dropped the key and said, I'm no more driving you, a cook said, I'm leaving your house, a wife said, I'm done. Sit down to ask what happened. I wish I'm talking to somebody here. Before you call people names, find out why they acted the way they did. When you know the reasons why some things are done, your hurt will reduce. You see, Apostle, but um, she should have told him. Is that, is that going through your mind? Is that going through your mind? Is that going through your mind? That when they put her under pressure, she should have mentioned to him that they are threatening her and her father's house. Is that going through your mind? Okay, it went through my mind too. Samson is not the kind of person to tell that. He will kill those that threaten the wife. He will complicate. You know, you say, but I've asked people why they hurt me, why they did this. You are not the kind of person they can open up to. Because if they told you, this is what, have you not seen people who are told, be careful, this person is after you. They walk, they walk to the person. You are after me. I wish I'm, that's what I'm teaching you life now, not just spirituality. Some people cannot open up to you because the last time they opened up, what they opened up to you about became a topic on your lips. So, they don't talk. Okay. People around you are dying. And they put on. There are people with offenses carrying friendly faces. There are people with offenses Carrying friendly faces because nobody to open up to. Especially the church of nowadays. The church of nowadays, all of us have become content creator. You talk to the church now, boom, what a shame. That's why if you can find a friend in church, you can sit open up to. Please hold that friend tight. And the Bible tells us that this woman never, so Samson took a step and left. Please. Never take a permanent decision on a temporary situation. Never take a permanent decision on a temporary situation. Fix it. Is there a crisis? Fix it. There will be crisis in life. There will be disagreement in life. Fix it. Where you are going to, you are not sure of it. Only where you are now has reality. Where you are going to, where, where you are expecting can be a mirage and imagination. Where you are now is reality. Fix what you have if it gets bad. I remember growing up as a younger, as a younger child, when things are bad, I'll tell my dad, I said, my wristwatch is bad, I want another one. And he asked me a question, can they repair it? Because we have the mentality that once it's bad, discard it. If we ask all the time, my shoe is bad, he said, bring it. Can they sew it? Anything wrong, nothing is too scattered that can be gathered. Nothing is too bad that cannot be fixed. Something left. We live in an erratic generation. A generation that believes, you know, our, our attention span is so short. And every day of our life, we are getting devices and applications that furtherly, you know, pull us into that dimension of life. You got a TikTok, two minutes video. You got it, this one. Three, attention span of children. Children are no more attentive. Have you discovered the last resort on JAM? The last resort on WAEC? Academically, their mind, their mind, their natural capacity is dwindling. Today, you see children can't even answer the simplest of questions. But they know who is this? Who is that online? It's a crisis. It's a crisis. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating? It's a crisis. So, Samson, the wife kept that. So be careful how you take permanent. 
decisions on temporary situations. And they threatened to burn down the father's house. And you know, if you read chapter 15, verse 6 of chapter 15, something happened and they burned down the father's house. They threatened to do it if she doesn't tell them. Something has happened in chapter 15, they actually burned, burned it. What people say in anger is what they mean. Don't let anybody tell you, I said it because I was angry. What they said, because anger and cheerfulness reveal the true state of a man. No, I only said that, that because I, I said I'm going to divorce you because I was angry. No, they were not angry. They only told you what is in their mind. Can I say this to you? Don't joke with threats. Every threat is a potential act. Anyone that threatens you actually means it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You have to be careful. They threaten to burn down the house and they burn down the house. Don't joke with threats. Don't play with threats. When threats come, it's out of their bottom. Because out of the joke, a truth is spoken forth. Out of an emotional outburst, the reality of an identity of a person's heart is unveiled. Am I communicating here? Are you getting anything at all? They threaten to burn it down and they burn it down. Samson was angry. So I'm giving you how Samson returned back. When Samson left, the father-in-law waited for a while. Samson was not coming. So he took Samson's wife and gave to Samson's best friend. Why is somebody clapping? Is that good? <laughs> okay, I know why you clapped. Does that teach you something? Anything you don't maintain, you lose. Life waits for nobody. Anything you don't maintain, when God gives you something, and you cannot maintain it, can I say this to you? A good husband is given by God, but keeping him is dependent on you. A helper is given by God, but keeping a helper is dependent on you. A good job is given by God, but keeping a good job is dependent on you. When you are someone who easily walks away from people, from things, from situations, from places, you will always have repercussions. Walking out of a home, Treating a person, abandoning her, and expecting to meet her. Can I beg you? Can I beg you? Even when people leave you, don't let them meet you where they left you. Don't let them meet you where and how they left you. Somebody left you, you had an ND. And five years later, they came back. You see, I have an ND. Something is wrong with you. Somebody left you. You had an HND. They came back. That's something is wrong with you. Somebody left you. You had no job. They came back, met you jobless. Please, when people walk out of your life, the time you are supposed to cry and weep, engage something new. Let something new take your time. Don't let life meet you the way life left you. When the woman, when something left, listen to me. Anointing, grace. Giftings, ability, capacity is given by God. But to maintain them is dependent on you. Samson was fully graced, super graced. But Samson ended up a rebel, a reproach. To the extent his name became a cliche. Can anything come out of Nazareth? Because he was the founder of the Naz Nazarene clan. Because of how he ended up a reproach. How he ended up a failure. God give you talent, give you gifting, give you ability. But you can die in non-entity. If you do not understand the tenets on how to handle that gifting. We are in a generation where people, God can open a door for you. But by your bad character, you can close the door with your hand. Can I repeat that? God can open a door for you, but by your attitude, you can close that door with your hand. Samson. Hiya. The father carry the daughter. You see, there are so many messages from this place. The father carried the daughter. Do you know the father's house being burnt with fire? The man had a hand in his crisis. When your children are married, leave them alone. You carried, the, you carried a daughter and handed over to the best friend. There are many fathers and mothers who till death want to control the marriage of their children. They want to determine what the wife of the husband, of the son does. What she wears. 
And it is bad mother, bad daughter-in-laws that become bad mother-in-laws. You that when you were married, nobody could control you. Now you want to control your daughter-in-law. Now you want to control your son. Every little thing that happens, you tell your daughter, pack home, carry your things and start coming. Your father's house is still there. Your father's house is still there. There's a crisis. You call up your son-in-law and you embarrass him as though the young boy has no parent. You touch my daughter again. You touch my... Come and carry your daughter. If you want to marry your daughter, marry your daughter. Some young men are under pressure. Before they speak, the wife has jumped on the phone. Mommy, mommy. Before they talk, I will tell my brothers. I will tell my brothers. And when you, when you are a young man, there are certain things you see, you, you should ask yourself questions. Are you following what I'm saying? You marry in a family where the young lady has so many brothers. First of all, make sure you have so many brothers too. Yeah. So, where, so that when... Is that too harsh? <laughs> okay. Well, see, eh? Whenever I talk to you, is the wisdom of life. So that when it gets to that point, when Ukraine wants to face Russia, <laughs> ah! so, leave, you are a sister-in-law, leave your brother's home. In fact, if possible, pack out of there. Pray for God to give, they give, they give an accommodation willingly, thank God. Walk away. How would you feel if some, there's an interference in your home like that? These are truths in church that we just, we just throw into the trash can. There are reasons today. There are some women today who are uncomfortable. They are dying in silence. Because the man has surrounded himself with all his family members. Your sister enters the kitchen, take what she likes. Your wife is quiet. She's dying. She's dying. Your mother comes to the house without announcement. She just came like a witch and landed at the gate. Mommy, mommy, you come. Here's my room. As if she's the landlady. Here's my room. When she entered there, she sit down like a madioha and she cross her leg like a shrine. So they are confused. She cross her leg like a shrine. The lady can, anything, any jewel that the daughter-in-law has, she has to remove it because by the time the mother sides gold, who are the one finishing my front money? Who are the one? Who are the one? Who are the... So the woman is under pressure. I believe God is talking to somebody. <laughs> I have younger sisters who are married. Younger people are brothers who are married, people who are married. I don't know what happens in their home, and I don't want to know. In fact, they even get angry at times that I act so uninterested. It's deliberate. Who is controlling my own? So why will I control your own? Brother, you just act like you don't care, like you don't care. Not that I don't care. I'm not interested. Make the mistake, quarter the quarter, fight the fight, make peace, and be happy. No, but it's the truth. Why you look? It's the truth. Myself and Mama, we have never fought. But you think we have no misunderstanding? We have never kept malice for one day. But misunderstanding means that you are coming with your different understanding. The other person is coming with their different understanding. When those two different understandings jam, they become misunderstanding. So there are things we don't quarrel, we don't fight. But there are things that I've, she has said. I said, no, I don't agree. Are you following what I'm saying? I said, I don't agree. Even when she's right, I don't willingly say she's right. Over the week, there was something that happened, and she was telling me, this is what this person said on the platform. I said, no, the person didn't say that. She cut the part and sent me the video. When I watched it, the person said, so, shame, catch me. But I said, well, really, this is not what the person meant. And she replied to me, he said, man. You will never agree. I said, not really. Not, not the, after a while, I said, now, wow. See, as you just, you, you, became, you became FBI. So, now, now, 
Am I communicating here? And we, we see such things come. The ability to turn it to a joke. That's what matters. Laugh over it. That, you mean, that little thing is enough for some couples not to talk again. Very childish. I said before they give people husbands or give people wives, they should check their brain. Some grown-up guys with beers have ice cream brain. The youth, <laughs> the youth friends that approached me that he wants me to give a day to the youth. So I'll give you on Saturday. I'll give the youth on Saturday, this Saturday. So we'll settle down for, by 2 o'clock, we'll just settle down and just talk for a while. So that we, pro we prep you for the future that awaits you. There's, no, there's nothing in the future. It's what you carry from this place. <laughs> you know, there are people that think, my future. A colorful umbra, I'm on God. My future. I believe God for a great future. But what you are today is what you become tomorrow. A thief today becomes an arm robber tomorrow. If you continue stealing. So Samson was in that crisis. Have you seen the narration? So when Samson now came back, Samson, when Samson found out that they had given his wife to his friend, Samson went and caused destruction. He scattered things. <laughs> he destroyed things. He did destroy his father's um, in-laws things. He found out what led to the crisis. Obviously, the wife must have opened up to him. This is what my life was under threat. That's why I did what I did. You didn't wait to ask questions. You walked away. So these people threatened you? That's what you did? Something just went, entered the, started destroying things. And they asked a question. Who has done this? They said it was Samson. So they went to his father's house. Same threat. Are you following the story? Went to the wife's father's house. The same threat. And they burnt the man and the daughter inside the house and burned them down. They burnt her and her father with fire. Samson said, no problem. Samson went back again. Scatter things. When Samson was doing that, the Philistines came up and met to the men of Judah and said, well, they are going to fight you. Who has done this? The men of Judah said, what have we done? They said, Samson has destroyed things around us. Hand him over to us and we will spare you. And the men approached Samson and said to Samson, please, these people are after us. They said we should hand you over. Samson said, let's have an agreement. You will just hand me over. You will tie me and hand me over. You will not touch me. He said, yes. You will not touch me. They promised. You will not come after me. They promised. So they bounded Samson and handed him over. Before we go further, that is an explanation of the reality of life. That if your people don't give you over, outsiders can't get you. If insiders don't sell you, outsiders can't buy you. Your attackers and haters and enemies are not as powerful as you think they are. There's only a mole. There's a mole and there's a spy. There's a hidden enemy. I make declarations in the name of Jesus. This first Sunday of the month of March, every hidden enemy, every secret enemy around your organization, your office, your job, your profession, anyone around you that is a mole, a spy, a hidden enemy that has become the backbone of your adversaries, the backbone of your attackers, the backbone of those that despitefully use you, I declare they are exposed today. They are exposed today. They are exposed today. They are exposed today. If your amen is louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Mm. Mm -hmm. The problem is always inside. The problem in the family is inside. When there are persist persistent battles, it's inside. When there are continuous battles, it's inside. It's not external. It's inside. Are you following what I'm talking about? It's always inside. The problem of the church is the church. It's not the world. The problem of the church is the church. I was, I was um, preaching here 
honestly, I will not respond to this if not for the sons of the prophet who are talking about it. I was preaching here and somebody else who called me. And I said something which I stand by. You see, I'm not somebody who says something and when everybody is shaking, I will not change my mouth because, no. In fact, when everybody is shaking, I will amplify what I said more so that everybody can shake more. I'm not a coward. When I say something, I will, even if the heavens are falling, I will stand by what I said. If everything shakes, shake, shake, it will balance. So I'm not, I'm not. I, say, I said something on this altar, and I repeat it, I stand by it. I was talking about those who preach grace, that once you are saved, you are saved. When I said I preached all of those things before until I lost a friend. I've told you the story. I lost a friend who was also a preacher of grace, and I found out what's going on. So I went to go and pray, and the Lord told me that you are preaching Paul, you are not preaching me. That you focus on Corinthians. Who wrote the letter to Corinthians? Who wrote to Thessalonians? So, the only dispute scripture is Hebrews. Today, we don't know if it was Paul that wrote Hebrews or not. So, God told me, he said, the teachings of Paul are not from the lips of Jesus. They are from Paul's lips. They are the revelation of Christ that Paul had. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel, we are the account of things Jesus said and did. And he said to me that my priority and focus should be on the life of Jesus. What Paul said is secondary. I can learn. Paul actually learned based on what he was told. He wasn't there. I don't know if you are following what I'm talking about. So I'm going to focus on what Jesus said more than what Paul said. If Jesus said something and I look at Paul and what Paul said is contrary to what Jesus said, I will not take Paul's own. I will take Jesus' own. And somebody says, oh, he said, Paul is not preaching Christ. If you, see, I'm responsible for what I said, but I'm not responsible for how you understand it. I'm responsible for what I say, but I'm not responsible for how you understand it. Even Peter was advising us that we should be careful of the letters of Paul. Peter that knew Paul was advising you about Paul. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 16. He says, some, some more learned people, they rest they rest and they labor, which is because they are too hard. Start from verse 15. Give us the message translation. I'm just digressing. I'm sorry for that. Okay? Interpret our master's special restraint for which, what it is. For what it is. Salvation. Our good brother Paul, who was given so much, much wisdom in these matters, Verse 16. Refers in his letters all he has written who essentially unto you, essentially the same thing. Some things Paul writes are difficult to understand. Is it, is it your Bible? Did I put it there? Some things Paul writes are difficult to understand. Irresponsible people who don't know what they are talking about, twist them whichever way. They do it to the rest of the scripture, destroying themselves as they do it. Are you seeing that? Most people don't understand that Paul preached grace, that we, we don't preach judgment. But the same Paul said in Thessalonians 1 verse 6, it is a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's a righteous thing. So let's stay on the scriptures and forget what I said. Let's go to scriptures. So, it is my response to that nonsense that's trending online. I said it. I stand by it. I will, I will choose what Jesus said over what Paul said any day. What Jesus said is priority. What Paul said is secondary. Paul, Paul was preaching his revelation of Jesus. It wasn't Jesus that was talking. The only three times Jesus spoke to Paul was when he appeared to him. Paul, Paul, why persecuted thou me? Secondly, when he said, lest you be exalted by the abundance of revelation, he sent an, a, 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 an affliction to buffet him. And when he asked him why, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. And several times when Paul was on the journey, he was to have a shipwreck. And God told, told him, he said, you shall get to the other destination. Those were direct messages from God. But every other teaching of Paul was his revelation of Jesus. It wasn't Jesus talking. It was Paul that wrote the letters to those churches. Do you understand me? Okay, so when they bring whatever they are saying, Explain to them what I said. That's if you don't have a job. If you have, if you have. 
Amen. If a pastor has a church, has a ministry, will he sit down, will he sit down before Facebook five hours every day? You are not a content creator. You are not in the entertainment industry. You sit down face Facebook every day. Five, yeah, you can't, he's not reading Bible now. If he's reading Bible and he's having programs, he won't have time for that. Amen? What was I even saying before? <laughs> now, this is the part I love. As Samson was handed over to the Philistines with a new cord, the Bible says a thousand men surrounded him. Do you know what one thousand is? Sometimes when you study the Bible, do you try to make a picture in your mind of the reality of that scripture? Not 50 men, not 10, not 100. 1,000 men surrounded one man to kill him. When Samson thought it was the end, write this down. Even at the end, there is a bend. Even at the end, there is a bend. When you think it's the end, God shows up. When you think everything is over, you are down and out. God shows up. And God is saying when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. When you are down to nothing, God is up to something. The darker your night, the brighter your light. When you think everything is over, the Bible says why Samson was still wondering what to do. He found a jawbone of an ass. That is the jaw of a donkey that was kept on the floor. That speaks of Calvary. He found the jawbone of an ass and took that jawbone. And with that jawbone, he slew 1,000 men with a jawbone. There was no sword when they gathered. There was no spear when they gathered. But ah, in the midst of that, a jawbone appeared. Sarko Parita, yeah, me child of God, there is something called the supernatural. Where did the jawbone come from? We don't know. How the job on appear we don't know you have believed so much in the natural you are limited because you don't understand there is something called the supernatural money can appear in people's accounts you don't understand what we talk about the supernatural water can be turned to wine you don't understand what we talk about the supernatural manna can fall from heaven you don't understand we talk about the supernatural there was no sword a job bone appeared a helper can show up in your life i'm talking about the supernatural the supernatural is when the celestial swallow the terrestrial. The supernatural is when God brings his extra on your ordinary. Sir, without you knowing, you have an empty passport now. But a visa can appear in one week. And in three weeks, you can see yourself in America. It's called the supernatural. You have no car now. You don't even have money to buy a car. Somebody can buy a car and give to you. Somebody say, Lord, I received the supernatural. Lord, 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 I receive the supernatural. Somebody shot fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Take your seat. Sir, in your journey to greatness, can I say this now? In your journey to greatness, there are crossroads where all you need is supernatural assistance. There are crossroads in your life. You need supernatural assistance because you can't figure out. See, can I say this to you, everyone? When you get to a point where you are trying to figure out a solution, Humanly speaking, it doesn't look there's any way connect to supernatural assistance. Say, Father, humanly speaking, I know nothing can happen. I connect to supernatural assistance. I receive supernatural supply. I receive supernatural assistance. Hear me, child of God. There is a world called the supernatural world. That is the ministry of the angel. They have, the angels are the facilitators of the supernatural. They facilitate manifestation. There are many of us who have come to a point and a junction in our lives. Humanly speaking, you don't know how you can figure out a solution to that problem. You don't know how to figure out a way out of that battle. At that point, something 
Imagine surrounded with 1,000 men in the midst of a, look at your mind's eye and imagine it in your mind's eye. And you're just imagining 1,000 men. Something thought that was his end. A jawbone appeared. I believe in the supernatural. When it appears, everything is over. I don't even know how my life is going to turn out. But I connect. I connect to the supernatural workings of God. Not by power. Not by might. But by my spirit. Say it the Lord. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. Somebody shout supernatural assistance. Take your seat. Hear this. Let me explain this. Miracle money is one of the debates today that people are debating. And I don't bother to debate. I don't debate what is real. I debate what has not happened, but I believe it can happen. But once it has happened, and I know it has happened, I don't debate it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Something I've not experienced, but I know it's possible. I can debate it. But something I know is a reality, I don't even debate it. Because a man with an evidence is not at the, at the mercy of a man with an argument. A man with an evidence is not at the mercy of a man with an argument. I was one of those, you see, what you do not understand, don't criticize, because you can become a practitioner of it tomorrow and you'll be called a hypocrite. I didn't, I didn't understand miracle money. I didn't even like it because it sounded weird until it happened. I pray somebody says somebody's account. I say maybe somebody paid it. And I, I saw it happen once, twice. I said, oh, this is real. But miracle money... People don't know miracle money is not an economy that God expects us to live by. Miracle money is an intervention. God does not expect you to sit in your house, cross your leg and be praying for miracle money. Go and get a job. But when you are in a situation that is there, you don't know how to come out of it, miracle money shows up. So that's the mystery of miracle money. In John chapter 4, and verse, is it 36 or 35? John chapter 4. Can you bring it up? I don't know if it's 36 or 35. Jesus was saying something. Okay. Go to verse 35. There's something I'm looking for. There's something I'm looking for. Go to 38. Go to 38. Now look at this. There are people that tell you that you cannot... Reap unless you, but that's not what Jesus said here. Look at it. This is the place where miracle money comes. I sent you to reap wherein you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, you have entered into their labors. So when somebody tells you, I believe in work, but you cannot enjoy favor when you depend on work because favor is beyond your work. Your work is to eat, not to live. You can't be rich by working. Bible says he that does not work should not eat. Eat. Work is for eating. It's not for riches. They are bought and that's what the Bible says. So those who say that you have to labor, how can you just get money that you didn't work for? I'm showing you what Jesus said here. I sent you to places you never labor that you reap from there. The teachings of Jesus what I will follow. Solomon said he that does not work should not eat. Paul said the same thing. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 10, I think. He said the same thing. If you don't walk, don't eat. Eat, eat, eat. Not rich. Walking is for eating. Favor is for riches. You walk to eat. But for you to bless people is beyond walk. How many walk can you walk to take off a nation? You shall lend to nations and not borrow. Hey! This is why when I speak, everybody keeps quiet. Because I come from scripture. I don't want to give arc arguments in the atmosphere. It's real. This thing is real. It's real. A miracle happened. The job of an ass. 1,000 men were killed. But this is it. After the 1,000 men were killed, Samson took the bone and dropped it. As far as I'm done, 
I don't need it anymore. I've used it. I don't. And the Bible says, Samson who had killed 1,000 men became thirsty. Enemies could not kill him. Thirst wanted to kill him. Enemies could not waste him. Lack of water wanted to. You know there are some of you, when you look at the battles you have conquered, and you look at the current battles, now you're asking yourself, Can I, will I die like this? God saw me through school. There were stubborn lecturers, I overcame them. Stubborn project, I overcame them. Now, is it joblessness that will kill me? If they could not kill me, should I die? Will I die like this? Some of you are abroad. You struggled. You went through all the hay water to get a visa. You finally got a visa. Now you are in a situation. And you're asking God, can I die like this? Look at something. 1,000 men gathered against me. They couldn't kill me. People conspired against me. They couldn't get me. Now just for water. Just for test. Just for test. I'm, I'm about losing my life. Samson said, God, at this point, I need you. So that tells you that even a mighty man is a mighty God. Ay, 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 ay. Even a mighty man is a mighty God. Something that we thought was so powerful. He got to a point, his strength failed him. For by strength shall no man prevail. Something, if you could kill the Philistine, why could you not manufacture water? Sir, there are times in your life you need God. Your gift will fail. Your talent will fail. Your education will fail. Your connection will fail. Your ability will fail. But I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help come from God who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer my feet to be moved. He that keepeth Israel will not sleep nor slumber. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. He shall pluck my feet out of the net. Sir, there are things that money cannot buy. Expertise, beauty cannot buy. Connection and content cannot buy. The same man who killed a thousand men was dying. Ordinary taste, test, test. No water. You never get to a point in your life where you think you don't need God. This is your beauty that's making you arrogant. One accident can, can reconfigure you. One accident. Just one disaster. What is disaster? You don't even have an accident. Just one pimple position in a very strategic area. You know there's some pimples that are very dangerous. They'll come and owe you on the eyelid. That eye, you cannot cover it. They hold you on the eyelid. You can't wink. You can't wink because they cover the eye. From there, it escalates. Imagine a pimple holding somebody on the forehead, very pronounced. Sir, be thankful to God. This arrogance, this pride, this your arrogance. Samson, a man that destroyed a thousand men. All of a sudden, he was dying of thirst. Take your seat. Let me talk to you. Dying of test. But sir, he cried to God. You know what God did? God brought water from that jawbone that he threw away. The same jawbone. Samson thought he was done with is where water came from. There are some of you, the same church that brought your deliverance, you walked away from. Can I say this? The unction that brought your deliverance is the unction that will determine your preservation. You have discarded a grace that made you because you feel you don't need a job on anymore. You have discarded, discarded the house fellowship here, a prophetic word came upon you. Because you think at this point you don't need God anymore. Some of you think you have conquered all your enemies so you don't need anybody to carry you. Not knowing that so long you are still in this world, it is full of battles. We are in a generation that discards so easily we are in a generation of use and dump. A generation where people do not have memories of the past. People don't care. A generation where once people will achieve what they want, they feel they don't need it anymore. So you must keep a door open. Because when you have passed through that door out, you need to pass through it in. Don't take up the ladder that helped you. Because you may need to climb down. There are so many people today, we are in a generation where people think this generation has no memory. All they think of is today. Something, the jawbone of an axe that helped you to kill 1,000 people, sir. That's not the kind of bone to throw away. You will know there's something in that bone. That it was beyond just a bone. There was power in the bone. That's a bone you keep in. There are relationships you don't break. For life. For life. Sir, for life. There are some contacts you don't break for life. 
there are some people that you owe thanks for life. There are some boss in your office, even if they mess up and they get you angry, sir, honor them for life. Because the times they came into your life was strategic. They gave you a platform, gave you a coloration. Am I talking to somebody right now? A generation that discards. The same man of God who dedicated your baby is the one you are fighting. The same pastor who dedicated your baby in that your church. That's your branch. That same pastor, you will sit down, you will finish the wife because you feel you don't need a job bone anymore. The same man that believed in you and carried you up is the man you have conspired with those that hate him to fight because you believe you are done with the job bone. You don't need it anymore. In the same place where grace came, grace kept you. Now you are blessed. You are not trying to ask us if Titan is scriptural. When you were broke, you didn't ask that question. When you were stranded, you are in a generation. There are many of you looking at me now who need to cry to God for repentance because you feel you don't need a job on anymore. Before you got married, you lay on the altar, you cried, you wept, did everything. Now you are married. The baby that God gave you is the reason you can't come to church early. The miracle God gave you is now the reason. I can't cry. You know, you know these children. You know these children. Yet people have 10, have 8, have 6, and they don't joke with service. When I travel with mom, Dr. Lizzie would go to programs. Sometimes when we go with the children then, they were just four. I would see her wake up as early as two. Bait everyone. Dress them up. You have a flight for seven or six. By five, even four, they are all ready. And I look at her. I say, when did you? He said, I woke up early. So I bait them. She will feed them, do everything. I said, oh, lazy, lazy. A lazy woman is a lazy woman. Because of the same blessing God gave you, your car broke down. That's why you came late. Park it somewhere and take a bike. Trek! You have abandoned the jawbone. The same jawbone that helped you to kill a thousand men. You don't know there is water in the jawbone. The jawbone gave Samson what he wanted. But Samson never knew the job was still had what he needed. The job on gave Samson what he wanted. But Samson never knew the job was still had <laughs> what he needed. You walked out of a grace thinking you have arrived, not knowing the grace still has so much to cover you. If you stay, if you stay under a grace for 10, if you stay under a grace for 10 years and you think you have so much, just imagine if you're under that grace for 20 years. The job on. Same job on. I wish I'm talking, I wish I can open my heart and talk to you. One day, a man of God died in this town. And I was in his convoy. And I was told that there are so many people waiting for counseling. I said, we are honoring a man today. I'm not coming for counseling. And went there. Went to the graveside. Honored him, a son of the soil. My heart was bleeding. I was we, we, we about one year or two years old. That's a ministry. So when I finished, I came to the office to pick something. I saw some of his former members waiting for counseling. And I said, you didn't attend the burial. And one of them said, ah, who don't die, don't go. That's a man who she followed for 24 years. Could not even honor him to attend the burial. And I said, madam, if I see you near this office again, who don't die, don't go. Bless you, don't die. You don't go. That's the generation we are in. A generation of, a degenerate, ungrateful generation. When some people are speaking, you'll be wondering if the people they are talking about are people who have helped them. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. There are people I've seen do something, sir. There are people I've seen do crime. Crime. I'm not a law court. I'm not a judge. So long as it's not a crime against society, against humanity, I'm not interested. I'm not aware. If people's, if people's good to you, people's multiple good to you, cannot swallow their tiny evil, then you have a bad heart. If people's multiple good cannot swallow their tiny wrong, then you have a bad heart. The good they have done should be what will fill your head. Not the tiny wrong. Do you know in the generation where if you keep supporting, the day you don't support, you are a bad person. Why are you that for me? Why are you, why are you that for me? You are not done anything. You are not done anything. I don't, see, me, I don't care. So now you are not feeding me, I don't care. 
Anybody that you talk to me, any, I, I bullshit you, man. Am I communicating now? Don't throw away the job on. Because you may need water tomorrow. I know your pastor has hurt you. Your pastor's wife has hurt you. Many that have hurt you. No, there's more. Everybody has hurt you, including me. Even as I'm talking now, he's hurting you. Because you are an egg that must be pampered. Am I talking to somebody here? You are an egg. That must be bliss song. They sang it for you. Daddy, where they pamper. Now you. That song is your own. You must be pampered. You, you must not be off. Everybody has offended you. Even the general overseer that you have not met has offended you. You are in a branch, oh. Yeah, from headquarters here, yeah, I've offended you. Everybody, everybody's wrong. No problem, no problem. But I'm trying to let you know, that is not enough to discard what you will need tomorrow. I'm telling you the truth. Life is full of twists and turns. What you walk away from today, a man had a wife, first child, a girl, second child, a girl, third child, a girl, fourth child, a girl, seven, Fifth child, a girl. Sixth child, a girl. Seventh child, a girl. Eighth child, a girl. The man told the woman, he said, no. He went somewhere and had a boy. He had a son. Drove that woman and eight children. I'm, I don't mean to discard men. I must say the truth. I'm a father. I have both genders. I have plenty of children. Plenty. I've biological. I've adopted. I've spiritual. Are you what I'm talking about? I can tell you, if you're a man that God gave daughters, eh, thank God. You see these sons? They don't care. Oh. I would message my son. He would reply me three days' time. I said, why did you reply me? That is school, school, school. Talk to you later. It is gone. But your daughter will ask you, sorry I didn't reply. Are you angry? Are you offended? I say, hey, why are they saying it is sons that are better? They care about your feeling. They want to know if you are okay. Sons, as far as they are concerned, we are guys. <laughs> we are colleagues. <laughs> Eight girls! He drove them away. Send them! Many years later, his son went to get a visa. While the son was there, the person inside who was checking out the documents and everything, the person saw a paper, was facing the document before they take it to the United Embassy. He saw a middle name and a last name. That was her middle name and her last name. She called the young man. He said, where are you from? The young man mentioned it. That was where she come from. Who is your father? The young man mentioned it. What does he do? The young man described him. She brought her phone and saw the father's picture. The girl smiled. She threw a document. Say, go and bring your father. Yeah, go and bring your father. Then come back to submit. Say, Please help me now. He said, you will submit today. He called his father. Bro, they bundled the man. The man came old. That's one thing about these old men. All the evil they did while they were young is when they are old that... I'm sorry. If anything I say that you don't like, just delete it. Delete it. Delete it from your memory. Okay, this is me. This is how I talk. And they met the man. He says, that your father says? He said, come close. Ma, please, oh, help, help my picking, oh, help my son. Oh. He said, daddy, do you, do, you, do you really want to tell me that this is your son? Yes, oh, it's my son. Help, oh, help, oh, help, oh, help, oh, help. Oh. He said, mommy, is this, daddy, is this the little child you had? He said, no. I have some other children. Do you know one woman that calls so and so? Yes, oh, Vero, 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 Vero. She said, get, 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 now, yeah, yeah, drive him. He said, Daddy, I'm Vero's third daughter. I'm the third child of Vero. So long I am here, your child cannot submit. For what you did to us. Eh, eh, my picky. Hey, who be your picky? Don't throw away the jawbone. Don't throw away the jawbone. Because that you discard today can become your source of lifting tomorrow. Don't throw away your jawbone. 
Don't throw away your job. On. Be careful. There's a man that ran for office in this country. He was number two to a man who was number one. Till date, he has contested for presidency several times. Till date, what they hold against him is what that number one wrote in his book about him. Till date, that's what they hold against him. And they ask him a question. Sir, if somebody is working with you and you tell the person to go to his previous place of employment to bring a letter, and they bring a letter discrediting him, will you employ him? Mind the way you treat people. Even your landlord. Mind the things you say. Because that landlord may be the one to stand shorty for you tomorrow in the police station. I will not die like this. Somebody say, I will not die like this. Say, I will not die like this. I can't hear. Say, I will not die like this. Sir, what has helped you should be kept. What has helped you should not be discarded. A job bone that has helped you, keep it. If you want God's support from people, you no more get from them. Keep them. Don't stop relating with people because you feel you don't more need them. Keep them. Even when they are no more helping you, keep appreciating them for what they have done before. Whatever has helped you to obtain and attain should be maintained. Whatever has helped you to obtain and attain should be maintained. Whatever has helped you to obtain and attain should be maintained. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. A young boy was in the choir. He was the vice president at one time. When we are think, we are the bachelor. As soon as their tenure expired, they put somebody else. He left church because once a boss, always a boss. He couldn't see himself take directions from other people. He left. One time he was arrested at Sabo. And he said, they said, who can stop? He said, apostle, apostle. He called. And the officer called me. I said, who is he? When they brought him with handcuffs, I said, I used to know him. But he left about a year ago. What, what is that? I should lie. I used to know him. I said, but he left about a year ago. Because he, he said to people, how can he now be taking instruction from people that were under him? Presidents of this country, when they become ex-presidents, they remain in the country. But the arrogance of some Christians is terrible. But you're born. You drop someone from head of department, from being head of department. So you want to now scatter the department. The same department that made you, that made them know your face. You are no more the leader. They remove you from being women leader. So you must scatter the women in the church. They put you from being HOD choir. So you must cause crisis. If I'm not a leader, we will not agree. They stop from being head of the usher department. Now there's crisis. You now have a camp. You have div as you are dividing that camp, that's how God is dividing your life. As you are splitting that department, crisis will come. Because you cannot be a, 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 an offense in the house of God. Don't let a man of God carry you to God in prayer. Study your Bible very well. Hebrews 13, 17. The Bible says it's not good for you. It's not good for you. It's not good for you. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves unto them that watch over your soul as they must give account that they may do it with joy, not with grief, for it is unprofitable for you. A man of God goes and says, Father, thank you for the work you have given to me. Thank you for this church. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for your grace and the testimony we are seeing. Thank you for Mrs. So-and-so who has been a blessing. Thank you for Mr. So-and-so who has helped me. Thank you for those who have made the body in light. But Father, you see Mr. Tobeto. You see Mr. Okorocha. You see Brother Lagbaja, Father, anything you would do to anybody that caused pain for your work, do. He say it's not grief. You see Sister Paulina, Father, answer her. It's not good for your soul. When people carry you to God in prayers, you, you see, you think these things, eh, it's just there, it's not, I beg you, nothing, nothing, nothing will happen. Time will tell you. When people are living a life that has cost an anointed man who has invested on them pain. Am I communicating here? Job on! Of an ass. If somebody left the house of God because of you, because of you, somebody stopped believing in Christ. Because of you, somebody left the church. Because of you, a giver stopped giving. I 
cannot die like this. Are you responding? I cannot die like this. What happened? Number one, if you must enjoy preservation, the Bible says, Samson said, you have given me deliverance from these Philistines. You must consider what God has done in the past. You cannot have a projection. One of the easiest ways to enjoy grace is to consider what God has done in the past. Sir, what God did. That's why you must take your Bible and study to tell us the things God has done. Revelation 19 verse 10. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You must get to that point. You understand in 1 Samuel 17, I think from verse 34, when David said that God delivered me from the lion and the bear. He would deliver me from this great Goliath. The God said there came a bear and a lion when I kept my father's flocks and I tore that bear and lion with my hand. He said that same God would deliver me from this Goliath. When you consider what God has done before, when the doctor gives you a report that you can never have a child, you remember there was a woman called Hannah. God gave her a baby. There was a lady called Rachel. God gave her a baby there's a virgin called Mary she conceived of the Holy Ghost there's a woman called Elizabeth God gave her a son the same God that did it before he can do it again what he did for one he can do for another we serve a God who has done great things in the past he has fed 5,000 men with five loaves of bread and two fishes do you know the meaning of embarrassment and disgrace that was what happened in John chapter 2 when they suddenly had no wine but this same God turned water into wine hear me and hear me well this God can do wonders this God can do miracles if he did it before he can do it again what he did in the past he can do it now I cannot die like this because God has preserved people in the time of old I cannot die like this because God has kept the patriarch in the faith I cannot die like this God has preserved me before he will preserve me again there was a time I slept and the enemy means you are battling for my life. They say he must not wake up. He must not wake up. She should not stand up. That was why you were having a nightmare because there was an attack for your existence. There was an attack for your rising. But God woke me up and that was why when I woke up, I stood up and said, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I cannot die like this. What God has done before, he will do it again. If he kept me before, he will keep me again. If he saved me before he will save me again I cannot die like this this is not my end God is alive and is able to keep to the uttermost I cannot die like this let me tell somebody he has done it before he will do it again ah. testimonies are the seals of God's captain capacity act reveals ways if you can celebrate the act of God you will see his ways continually if you can celebrate the acts of God you will enjoy his ways continually when you begin to say that's why some of you are looking at this church at me now in this church you have never given testimony in your life never no matter you have you have you have changed several cars oh, but you cannot you <laughs> You have never testified. It's like an entitlement. It's like God owes you. Tia, sister. God has given you a miracle chair. If I'm uncle. All the church and service where they go, Papa, they pray, so I know get picky. Ow. Come and testify. Ah, back, back. God has done it. So you, you, are, you feel entitled, 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 entitled. You feel it's something that you deserve. When you celebrate the act of God, you enjoy his ways. You must celebrate what he has done before. So you can enjoy what he's about to do. Don't be discouraged. Anytime you're in a crisis, look for where God has done something like that before. Let that become your fortitude, your bedrock. You can't die like this. Because somebody has been in this kind of situation before God brought them out. 
this affliction that you have been afflicted with in your body, somebody has had this kind of sickness and God brought them out. This crisis, somebody has had it and God brought them out. You cannot die like this! Number two. And I'm going to pray. Are you blessed at all? I can't die like this because I have a future. In verse 20, <laughs> in verse 20, the Bible says, after that, he judged them in the land of Philistine 20 years. This is somebody who was about to die of test. There was still 20 years ahead of him. Somebody that the enemy was about to extinct. You have a future. You can't die like this. There's an assignment on your life. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I think towards you, see the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Ah, Psalm 139, verse 17. It says, how precious are thy thoughts towards me, O God. Great is the sum of them. Isaiah 55, verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways, your ways, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts and your thoughts and my ways than your ways. Hear me, child of God, that you have a future. Don't look at the present. Look at where you are going. There are nations. Do you know your current warfare is because of the welfare of certain destinies. Your current welfare is because of your current warfare is because of people's welfare. Your current battle is because of several mantles you carry. If you don't have a future, Satan will not bother you. The devil is a businessman. He does not invest where there's no profit. If there's nothing about you, Satan will not bother you. He's too smart. Bible says, go it about. What's he looking? Looking for the one that is a good investment. So the reason you are seeing battles around you is because there's a future. There's a future. There's a future. Sir, even if you don't feel there's a future, initiate what has a future. Even if you don't feel there's a future, initiate what has a future. Somebody can open his mind and say, as I'm coming to this church, whatever branch you're in, this so, so so amount is my contribution to the diesel of the service. I must walk to the pastor at the end of the service and say, sir, this is 2,000, this is 5,000, this is 1,000. I do that every Sunday for the rest of my life. God, we have a, enough reason to keep you alive. Every month, I will contribute to the feeding. Every, initiate a lifetime project. A lifetime Initiate longevity. There is something you initiate. So long God keeps me alive. Every week, every month, this is what I'm going to be doing for God. And God said, because of this you have said, because of your relevant, you have secured longevity for yourself. You have secured long life for yourself. There are people that the angel of death cannot terminate. Because they have a, I have a long life project for myself, for my tree. I have a long a longevity project. The Lord, so long I live, let everything be hard. Let a bag of rice be, be 200,000. We will still feed people. Am I talking to somebody here? Because it is a covenant. It's a covenant with God. We will still give them meal. They will still come. So when God sees that, God says, no, there are thousands of people that look forward to Saturday to come and eat. If anything happens to this person now, those people will cry and say, God, why? Initiate a long life project. A project that determines longevity. Pastor, leave this for me. Every battery on the microphone, I will be buying it. Where's the technica? Don't disturb pastor. Anything concerning diesel, my family will take care of it. For, there is there that, sir, he, listen to me. I know you say, ah, Papa, is it all about money? Not just money. It can be cleaning the chairs. It can be every Saturday. So long I have chance, I will join the altar decorators. I will join sanctuary cleaners. There's, there is, must be a long life project that heaven will look down and say you have a long list of reasons to be preserved. I cannot die like this. There's a future. I'm going somewhere. Like I said, even if there is no future, initiate a long life project. Initiate a project that when heaven looks at. So in other words, even if you don't feel you have a future, deliberately create a future. I cannot die like this. Be upstanding. My time is up. Be upstanding. If you leave me now, where will I go? 
If you leave me now, where will I stand? Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You are my anchor for life. Oh, you are my melody. You are my passion. Till the day you will come. Jesus. You are my everything. You are my standard. Till the day you will come. Payale! Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am. Till the day you will come. Did you get anything this morning? Are you sure? You know, some of you in some of our branches, branches, some of our branches walking, watching, at the end of this service, you walk to your pastor or your pastor's wife and apologize. Because of the role they have played in your life at a certain time. And later, some of the things you said, don't tell them what you said or what you didn't say. Just walk to them and say, please forgive me. You know what you said. You know what you did. If you can send them a message, send them a message. Because now you are testy. Things are not happening because you have thrown away the jawbone of the ass. So you are testy. People you have grieved, who have been a blessing to you. Who you have castigated. They have never mentioned the good they have done. That is just all God wants to happen. So he can open your heavens. A new husband, a new wife. You husband that is, you are so angry with your wife. Wife, you are so angry with your husband. Have you sat them down to ask them, tell me what really happened? What led to this? What led to that? You have not asked. You are keeping grudge. You are in pain. You are not talking to your husband. You are not talking to your wife. You have cut off your children, cut off your daughter and your son. You have not sat down to ask them what happened. This message was, is for somebody. It's for somebody. We're going to pray, Lord, I receive supernatural assistance. Where did that jawbone come from? Where did that jawbone come from? Lord, as I pray, I receive supernatural assistance. Who is ready to take that in prayer? Lift your right hand. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Say that again. My father, my father. Say that one more time. My father, my father. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray. I receive. Supernatural assistance. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. Supernatural assistance. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Yes, I am. 
Samson. Samson was body ruled. Emotion controlled. is will driven. We are going to pray for the grace to submit totally to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Your emotions can make mistakes. Your will can direct you wrongly. But only the Spirit of God helps you to make the right decision. In the midst of a, cri of a, of a crisis, it takes submission to the Holy Spirit to still be sensitive not to take a step, a step outside God. And that's one of the things we are doing around the world as we preach, teaching people what it means to align to the will of God. Are you listening? Are you tired? We're going to take one prayer. I mean, if there's someone that should be tired, I think it should be me. But I'm preaching. On Friday, we're in Abuja. Friday? I mean, in Abuja on Friday. Preaching the gospel. For those who are, who are in Cameroon, we prayed and got a, a clearance. April 2nd and 3rd will be in Cameroon. April 2nd and 3rd. The crusade for Cameroon is now April 2nd and 3rd. So we'll be in Cameroon on the 2nd. So tell those who initially, um, is, it, is it Mokyo, Mokyo Stadium? Modi? Modiko? Mo what? Modibo. Moliko. Okay, Moliko Stadium. So we're going to be there. Um, second and third of April. So get ready. Travel down. Everyone in Cameroon being in Cameroon that period. Let's see what God is going to do for intimacy. Amen. We're going to pray. Lord, I receive grace to submit to the leading of the Spirit all the days of my life. I receive grace to submit to the leading. Not my will, but thy will be done. That's the prayer we prayed last Sunday. Not my will, but thy will be done. I receive grace to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit all the days of my life. Not my will, not my emotion, not my desire, not my intellect, not my ideas. I receive grace to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit all the days of my life. I receive grace to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit all the days of my life. I receive grace to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit all the days of my life. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Shout it louder. My father, my father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
As I begin to pray, as I, begin to pray I receive grace, I receive grace to, submit to submit to the leading to the of, the of the Holy Spirit all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Open your mouth and fire prayers. <laughs> Receive supernatural assistance. The grace to submit to the leading of the spirit. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Your situation changes. May crisis be over. In Jesus name. Now listen, this is the month of March. Let me bless you for this month. Three things God told me about March. The Lord said I should tell you that in March, listen well, you shall move from shame to fame because of his name. He said you shall move from shame to fame because of his name. He said tell them that in March, you will not be stranded. In March, you shall be supernaturally helped. I repeat it. You shall move from shame to fame because of his name. You will not be stranded. You shall be supernaturally helped. Right now, I decree concerning March. In Exodus 19 verse 1, you see on the third month, that children of Israel left Egypt and came to the wilderness of Sinai. The third month. I decree this third month, let it be your divine relocation. This third month, may God move you from the place of captivity. From captivity to celebrity. What was not working, we work this month. What does not function, we function this month. I speak grace. 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 In the name of Jesus. You will not bury your loved ones. You will not bury your brother. You will not bury your sister. You will not be buried. The hand of God be upon you. In Jesus mighty name. Open your oil. Light of this world. You step down into darkness. Hope in my eyes. Let me see. If somebody by you doesn't have oil, turn on their palm. Turn on their palm. Beauty that makes this heart adore you. Hope of a life spend with. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow 
Lifted up, I ask for supernatural grace upon this oil, this bottle, this plastic, whatever it is. I decree the bodily, tangible presence of the Holy Spirit. So as you anoint yourself, let there be miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of Jesus. Now, listen, hold on, hold on. Those of you with oil on your palm, keep your palm up. Those of you with oil in the bottle, touch your palm with oil and cover the bottle and keep it safe. Then lift up the palm with oil. Let every palm with oil be lifted up. Don't anoint yourself until I instruct you. If you are putting on glasses, you may need to remove it. Now, put oil on your palm and lift up that hand. You have asked for supernatural assistance and it will give it to you. I need you all. I need you Lift up the hand with oil. Every hour I need you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Parakati Paradasha. Tete. Those of you around the world watching all our satellite churches and connecting via the airways in any platform, make sure the hand with oil is lifted because supernatural assistance is coming. Supernatural assistance is coming. Yeah. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to you. And let your power flow. In this place, let your healing come. In this place, I call for signs and wonders. In this place, let your glory come. Lift up that hand, lift up, lift up, lift up. Say in the name of Jesus, as I anoint myself, on common favor, on common speed, on common divine assistance, supernatural interventions manifest in my life. As I anoint myself, power of the highest, power of the highest, power of the highest, power of the highest, fall on me now. Touch your head with it, touch your head, touch your head and keep your hand there. Keep your hand there, keep your hand there. Power, power, help them, help them. Power, 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 power. All our satellite churches, I ask for the anointing. I ask for the power of God. Touch! 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 Power! Fall upon that sister. Wherever you are watching from. Power, fall upon that brother. Fall upon that choir member, that protocol, that usher who has been crying to God for an intervention. Let the praise of God take! Paratata tarata. The Holy Ghost is moving via the airwaves. Via the airwaves, there is distribution of talent, of gifts, of talent, of gifts, of talent, of gifts. There's a restoration. There's a restoration right there, right there in that nation. There's a restoration in that country, in that state. Power! Asiketitireti. Perorodo. Perorodo. 
This oil on your head will answer the questions on your life. Whatever has caused you unrest, today I lay them to rest. Whatever has stolen your rest and peace, I command it rest in pieces. Father, move your people from question to answer. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Clap those hands and clap those hands. Hear this before all those remain standing. Before all our churches who are watching, who are hooked up. Before you go off. The minister's conference of 20th of March is very, very important. Pastors do very well. If you can come with your leaders, it is important. If you can come with leaders, ordained ministers in your different churches, it's very compulsory for every Omega ordained ministers. This is not when we select or you choose to do what you want to do. We all have to be here for the minister's conference. God bless you. All our satellite churches and all of that, you can go back to do what you want to do while we go on with the service. A few minutes from now, we're going to close. Take your seat. Admin, Pastor Yari, are the air conditioners working? Are they working? This place is hot. No Nepal light. I see people find this place is hot. We apologize. It is our country. It's my turn. Yeah. We don't know tongue for what or what we don't know tongue, but just my tongue. So whatever we are going through now, God will bring us out of it. Don't worry. But just just um bear with us. We have a good air conditioning system here. In case you are coming for the first time, this is not the representative of what we are. But um even abroad now they take light. We are not aware. Don't let me talk. Oh. South Africa, light, power goes out in South Africa. They call it um, low, low shedding. Yeah. Low shedding. Ghana, light goes off at times. When you visit Nigeria too much, you get back, light will go off. So, we thank God. Father, we honor you. We place you on the highest place for you are the great high priest we place you above all earth as we come to you and worship at your feet. I saw a child that collapses. Who has that? Who has a child like that? Where's the child? What's his name? Destiny. Is that his name? Yes, sir. Wait. Stand up. There's a voice that calls him. Sometimes we'll just stand and we'll walk away. There's a voice that calls him. And when he hears that voice, he'll just walk away. Walk away. If I lock the door, he will even want to jump upstairs. He want to jump Who are from you? up. Come on, come on.
God is delivering children this month. Yeah. What is Nelson? Was a child like that? Nelson. Nelson. You have a child called Nelson? Come. To grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse, reveal, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all my sins. Set him free, Father. Set him free. Set him free. Amen. Where's the father? He's at home, Enugu. What does he do? He's a, a security man. Can I pray for the father? Yes. As I was praying for this boy, the Lord said, pray for the father for preservation. Because what he's doing is very risky. Yes, sir. What he's doing is very risky. Yes, sir. The Lord said, pray for the father. Tony. Yes, sir. Yes, Papa. Sir? Sir. Yes, sir. His name is Tony. Pray for the father for preservation. And I'm asking the Lord to preserve the father of this child. Of this child. Immaculate. Immaculate. Who is immaculate? Stand there. What do you want to be? Eh? You want to be what? The governor. Governor? Yes. I have not heard this before. This is big, oh. And ye lock me, yeah. And ye need me, yeah. And ye lock me, yeah. Jesus, oh, go. And ye lock me, yeah. Baba, and ye need me, yeah. And ye lock me, yeah. Jesus, oh. Wash him, purify him for the dream and vision he has. Purify him. So do I hear me the time on it? And you, Baba, oh, logo. We ask for you. We pray. Thank you, Lord. To be a great, great, great boy in life. O salo buana, o bolo serio, o gaia da bome, que no mao do he tenia, do he tenia, do mano da ye da bome, que no mao. Jesus Christ, in of your son, oh, oh, man, oh, God, yeah, that bomb, eh, can oh, my, oh, Jesus Christ, in of your son, oh, 
You can turn a man's life around. Help this boy. So God is not, God is not just healing. Ma, come. Mama, governor. Hold him, hold him, hold him. He's free. By the mercies of God. Ashe. Where's the mother of this child? She's at home. She's watching. She's watching? Yes. I was looking at this picture. I was seeing a pregnant woman. Yes, she's pregnant now. Is Marcos. Yes, sir. That's my name. What's your name? Is Marcos. Wait. Stay there. Just stay there. Wait. Where are you from? Where are you from? From a diocese. Come here. Are you here alone? With my brother, Pastor Lucky. Where is the pastor Lucky? God say your time has come. Heaven, uh, what do you do? You are learning Taylorin. Jesus. I was seeing a child. I was seeing a child. Okay, I was seeing a child. Okay, sir. Oh, it's okay, sir. I want to pray for you because I saw a child. And God said I should pray. God said I should pray. I saw somebody that was with you. But something happened. And God said to me to pray. Okay? You don't want me to say anything? If you come to this place, don't select what you want God to talk about. Because I can speak about the things that you don't even. Come. Who is she to you? My junior sister. Your junior sister. I want to pray because of the way our life is. It's a concern to everyone in the family. Yes, daddy. And the Lord is ending the confusion around her. Yeah. Whose mother is called Nkem? Whose mother is called Nkem? Whose mother is called Nkem? Listen. I saw this woman. I saw two different men. Children from two different men. And I saw Nkem. I saw children from two different men. If that's your mom's name, you can come. Easy, easy with the child. Easy. Don't run. Okbe, who is Okbe? Who is Okbe, Yemi? Adiago, Adiago. What's your name? Okoye mi Adiago, sir. That's your mom. That's her name. Okay. Jesus. Sally. Okoye mi. What's your name? Eh? Okay. Your name is what? Okay. Stand here too. You. Four years from now. Obey God. Okay? Yes. Obey God. Fully. One, two, three, four. Children. 
Four children, sir. I know. I'm, as, I'm not. I'm telling you. Okay, sir. One, two, three, four. Yes, sir. Your children. Yes, sir. But I'm instructing you what God has said. Because you are called to be a minister of God. Yes, so please, don't be afraid. Okay, sir. You do what God wants you to do. Because now you are wearing uniform. Yes, sir. I'm a soldier, sir. Don't be afraid. Jesus that is to come. 2028, pull it. Okay, sir. Pull that one. Okay, and sir. wear another one. Okay, sir. The one for ministry. Amen. Who is, who is Felicia? Felicia. Felicia. You are not on this road. You are on this my left hand side. Because people feel that Papa always prophesy on this road. It's only because this way I'm standing. It's nothing. If I come to where you are standing, it will be the same thing. But I want to pray for somebody. I had this revelation yesterday. And I want to pray for you. There's a particular ailment that took your mom. Your mom died with that ailment. That same ailment attacked your sister. And now you are feeling the symptoms of that same affliction. The Lord says I should pray for you. Whoever you are, you are around this region. Is you? Come. I saw that revelation yesterday. On the leg. Left leg. Left leg. Left leg. Right Stand up. Leg. Stand up. When they want to take anyone, that's where they pass through. But listen to me today. What is revealed is redeemed. The Lord showed me that yesterday. And I'm saying this by the mercy of God. I reverse it. Amen. Jesus name. Your time has come. Who is favor? Who is favor? Who is favor around here? Show them favor. Come. You are what? Put the mic on this mic. I'm not getting I'm not getting myself, sir. As if I want to run mad. How do you know you want to run mad? I'm not getting myself. How do you have in, how do you have enough sense to know you want to run mad? So you, I, you, you feel your mind is is raising. Yes, I'm confused. I'm not getting myself. Come. It's over a month now. I saw a deliverance service. I saw a deliverance service. I saw a deliverance service. A prayer service. Prayer service ended. Attack came. Yes, sir. That's what I saw. You are a minister. Yes, sir. I saw a deliverance service after the administration service attack. Yes. The people that this somebody who there is an altar and there is a force on this person's life, you came to help them minister and what was fighting them focused and turned. You have the anointing of God upon your life. Yes, why? What are, what are you doing? That's the wife. Is that your wife? Yes, sir. She's Let the wife mom. come. Hey, hey, don't, don't do that. The ushers have to be smart. Okay. That's my stand. Papa. You told your mom you want to come and see me? No, this one needs prayer. This one. So he can behave well. Yes. He's not behaving... But Father, let him be restored. Amen. What killed others will not kill this. Amen. How old were the others when they died? Four, four years. Four, four years. One died 16th of January. That's why we ran. You ran in the name of Jesus. Preserve him. You are free. What do you do? Where? In secondary school. Stand up. Jesus. Let her be delivered. She's your daughter? The mighty name of Jesus. Be free. Jesus' name. Pick this guy up. 
that thing that entered into you. Ow! Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. There's something fired into his stomach. Come out of him. Get out. Out! Through your mouth. 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 Come out. 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 The mighty name of Jesus. This is a child of God. This is a minister of God. Is called by God. Let the anointing of God set him free. Every deposit, let it go. Is free. Let me, let me, wait, 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 wait. Those of you that are ministers or that go to minister, let me warn you. Lay hands on no man suddenly. Be careful in laying hands on people. You can pray for people from afar. Before you put your hand on a person's head, because the head is the place of impartation. It's either you are putting or you are taking. No hand laid on a head like this. That is why if you see some men of God, if you do like this, they won't touch you. Not because they are scared, but they don't want to impact on you what they carry. They don't want the grace to fall on you. The easiest way to get impartation is the laying hands. Paul said, lay hands on no man suddenly, neither be partaker of other men's sin. So when you lay hands on a person, you partake of what the person. So if what is on you is not strong enough, you, be, you come under attack. So if people come to you for prayer, you can hold their hands and agree. They bring their hands and say, don't worry, let me hold your hand. Until you are led by God. It's not fear, it's wisdom. If you are wise and you take counsel, you will not be a victim. But those who are not wise, that's why it's, it's, ministry is not something you enter or you do without a mentor. Don't ever. You can stop going to politics without having any godfather. And paradventure you may win. But ministry is too sensitive and too risky to enter as an orphan. Somebody must tell you stop. Somebody must tell you start. Somebody must say no. Somebody must cover you. Anytime Moses is um, Joshua is faced with a big temptation. He will say, Moses, God's servant. As soon as he remembers his Moses, the grace on his Moses comes on him. The fire of God that fell upon Mount Carmel, it wasn't Elijah. It is not possible what Elijah did. You know what Elijah said? The God of Abraham. So all the altar that Abraham raised, altar Isaac raised, altar Jacob raised, fire fell on that altar. It was that altar that showed up for Elijah. So be, don't, don't. Ministry is not grandstanding. It's not um, what you do with the arrogance of the flesh. Nothing will happen to them. No. There are men who have made those kind of arrogance. They went to their family house, destroyed shrines, and ran mad. Monipito. Monipto. 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 What's your name? This lady carrying a child. What's your name? Monipito. Monipito. Is that your name? Your last name? Yes, sir. Come. Wait. Ma, you said this what? Your bet month. It's my bet month too, I think so. What is that? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. How many of you came with your seat for the altar? I gave that instruction. Don't worry. At the right time, you'll come out with this. It's not time yet. Relax. When is time? Relax. <laughs> Relax. Be 
people can never be satisfied. Stand up. She's happy God has healed her, but she wants money, financial favor. It's all right. God that did the first one will do the second one. He healed you to make you whole. Are you the one I told to come? You sent me a message. Sit down. I used to see this lady at the airport. Whenever I am traveling to Abuja, I see her at the airport and um, the private wing. And she said she's from my, from Benway, so from Benway State. So I used to call her my in-law. So I got a message from her yesterday saying she's sick. This is not the person I used to see. What turned you to this? Sit down. Who are you? Your uncle. Yes. You look so different. The devil is a liar. Don't worry. Relax. You are going to be okay. You sent me a message that you want to come. And I said, come. Yes, sir. I won't tell you come if I don't know the God I serve. I know the God I serve. You know, whenever I say certain things, I'm teaching you honesty. Me telling you this is a lady... I used to see at the airport. It's not an information you need. But it's me being honest that I know her. It's not an information you need. If you're a young minister, I'm teaching you how to be honest. So I can't walk to her and say, oh, but I, I saw her by the Spirit. I know her. Are you following what I'm saying? Because she will not be, the miracle I want to happen will not happen outside the platform of honesty. The anointing flows when the pipe is pure. So, God is going to heal you, daughter. God is going to heal you. They, then, put the mic, you said? After you prayed for me, they now called me that very day that I should go to the airport manager's office. So when I went there, they now gave me the letter. The next day I proceeded to So you were telling me Kano. about something I should pray for you about. Yes. And I that, prayed for you. Yes, that, that same day. day. Yes. They called me that I should go to the airport manager's office. So when and I as went, soon as you got it. I don't know myself. You again. didn't know yourself because again. Object is moving in my body. All right. I've been coughing. In the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. We package this arrow back to sender. Father, let everything walking, creeping, crawling around our body disappear. Restore our flesh, our, our color, vitality. Be healed. You are free in Jesus' name. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name. How old is that child? Six? Six what? Five months? I am walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Stand up, ma'am. You are not happy. You are not happy with the father of this child. You are not happy. Before I pray for the child, forgive. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Because the man, the kind of hatred, now, you don't understand what's going on. Ah, this lady thinks I'm guessing. You think I am guessing. She thinks I am guessing. She thinks happy. What's his name? Happy. Like What's his name? Happy. You think I'm guessing. You think I'm guessing. He's in Oman. He's in Oman. Yes, sir. That's where he lives. Yes, sir. Now, listen. There's a crisis now. Don't worry. Because you are not happy. Because of what you feel he did to you. Yes, sir. I want to marry you. I love you. Uh, come and see your people. Introduction. Uh, yes, sir. After that, he, he turned his back. Yes, sir. And you are not happy. 
Right? Yes, sir. And you don't know why. Because you feel he didn't do the right thing. Don't blame him. Don't blame him. Don't blame him. It's, it's, the thing is you, the thing is fighting. He's, he doesn't know what he's doing now. Okay, let me tell you something. You know, your sister, bless him. Yes, sir. Blessing wanted to marry. Yes, sir. The man came. Yes, sir. Did introduction. Yes, sir. After that, hate blessing. Yes, sir. The same thing happened to you. Yes, sir. If you are blaming this boy, was he the one that caused blessings own? No. <laughs> Listen to me. Today, God will touch him because that boy doesn't know that if he treats you right, that country he is, doors will open for him. He doesn't know that there's something about you. There's a grace. There is a favor on your head. Ah. Uh, what's your name? Oh, what's your name? Favor. This is the season where God will fix blessing, fix you. Restore! Jesus' name. Come here. Sweet Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Ask for a feeling. I ask for common rest. You are brighter. Come. There's a baby I will see that is crying. Can somebody find out what's, what's up? It's a baby that's crying. Wow. Just wave your hands wherever you are. Where's your mom? You will not cry concerning your mother. You will not cry concerning your mother. Wherever you are, you will not cry concerning your loved ones. Yeah. Woman, don't distract me. Calm down. I heard the Lord say to tell you he will preserve her. Because of what is happening to her now. And she will eat the fruit of her labor because a woman that is behaving like father and mother only a mother that is mother and she is father. When it's time for you to reap and the enemy begins to fight today as I lay hands on you. Anyone here who has sown, who has labored, you will eat the fruits of your labor. Name of Jesus. Eat the fruits of your labor. Eat the fruits of your labor. Eat the fruits of your labor. Stand up, mommy. Please, mommy, sit down. What is it? Sit, sit. Mommy, wait. Sit down, mommy. Were you admitted? Yes, sir. You were admitted? Yes, sir. How long were you admitted? Like two more, sir. Two months. Yes, sir. You've been admitted. Yes, sir. Why did they admit you? Because what's wrong with you is not a medical thing. You don't know what's wrong with you? Uh, the doctor said I have a kidney problem. You have what? Kidney problem. Kidney. That's what the doctor said? Yes, sir. Is that what you think is wrong with you? I'm confused. I don't know. God bless you. Mommy, sit here. Let him sit here. God will show you mercy. Look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and pour your love. You looked beyond me. Oh. 
looked but my sin. My shame. Mercy. You have shown me mercy. Father, make him whole. Make him whole. In Jesus' name. Let him be healed and free. In Jesus' name. Those of you carrying placards, come here. Come, I can't come to you. Come. Placards, come. Placards. <laughs> oh Lord. Is this a prayer point? You are working at Jolie's kitchen. Your phone was stolen on Friday. You want the phone to be returned back. Now everything that they write for prayer point. Even your, your carelessness, you are writing it on prayer point. They stole your phone as you were walking. Where did you keep it? Where did you keep it? Sleeping. Where you were sleeping? Yes, sir. The person came there yes, sir. and collected it. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Healed. Open the eyes of my heart. Your phone was stolen. Where do you people keep these phones? Open the eyes of my heart. In the name of Jesus. This baby be healed. Jesus name. Fale hands on you, you go. Jesus name. To see you. Jesus name. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Father, let the child be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Where is this child? At home where? Urumi. Urumi. Yes, sir. Hold this. Please, who can, who can give me a bottle, your, your oil, you can give me? I won't return it. Wait, wait, wait. I won't return it back. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put on this oil. This child has every problem. Walking, talking, every problem. So you will take this oil and anoint this baby. And the power of God will come on the child. The child will be totally healed. Congratulations. Father, let this child be healed. Jesus name be free now wherever you are wherever you are please stand stand even when I fall your hand you still what is it step my soul do you not break my heart be free, be healed, be changed in your family. Make a whole. Jesus. Jesus. 
by your second anniversary, the Lord would have completed you and increased you. You are my father. When I look around, I see your faithfulness in the name of Jesus. week that you would hear physically physically you will hear confessions from quarters you never expected this week the God of heaven shall preserve you he shall sustain you he shall fight for you he shall stand by you he shall uphold you and he shall do you well in Jesus name wave those hands wave it please I want to gl close but nobody steps out while I do this wherever you are you are saying apostle pray for me I want to make peace with the almighty God I want to be born again I want to serve Jesus please pray for me nobody sitting down we are closing now Please pray for me. I want to serve Jesus. I try. I'm not able, but I want to serve Jesus. If you're in that category, raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. I'm going to count to five. I want you to come forward. One. Come. Two. Come forward. It pays to serve Jesus. I speak from my heart. Come. He will always be with us if we do our part. There's nothing this wide world can ever afford. There's peace and contentment in serving the Lord. He pays to serve Jesus, I speak from my heart. He will always be with us if we do our part. There's nothing this wide world can pleasure afford. There's peace and contentment in serving the Lord. I will love him for better than in days of year. I will serve him more truly than ever before. I will do as he bids me, whatever the cost. I will die at true soldiers. I will die at my post. I will do what you bid me, whatever the cost. I will be a true soldier, I'll die at my post. He pays to serve Jesus, I speak from my heart. You he always be with us if we do our part. There's nothing this wide world can pleasure afford. There's peace and contentment in serving the Lord. Our Lord. For better than in days of year, I'll serve him more truly than ever before. I'll do as you bid me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. 
I'll die at my post. All of you in front of me, can you please go on your knees? Thank you. And say this after me with your hand lifted. Say, Jesus, I surrender all to you. Have mercy on me. Write my name in the book of life. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I am saved in Jesus' name. I pray for you now and I decree the Lord keep you. You will stand firm until the end. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Rise and shine. Clap for them. Listen. Wait, 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 wait. You were given a form. I want you to fill the form correctly. Please, you go back to your seat in one minute, but do something. Just go this way. Somebody wants to talk to you. One minute. They want to write something for you. This way. One minute. From there, you go back to your seat. One minute. Go this way. Clap for them as they move. Clap for them. I'll do as he bids me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die. How do as he beats me? Ushers, be very fast with them. When I say fast, be extremely fast. Wait. Wait. So you are the one carrying him? How did he come out? You carried him. Sir, look at me. How are you? How are you? Can you speak? You can talk. The name! Of Jesus, demon of paralysis, attack in his body. You have no right to be here. Go! Give me your hand. Stop. Come. 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 Jesus. Go. You said what? Get the mic. Papa, he was carried there. He urinated on himself. They said he will win and poo on himself. So they carried him about. Let him go. He He's could free. not stand at all. He's free. Clap your hands. Don't forget, youth, we are going to be having a good time. Make sure. Amen. Amen. Youth on 9 tomorrow, 4th of March, 
9.30 p.m. All ushers should wait to see the resident pastor, Pastor Joseph Iyari. All ushers. OFM men, your whole ninth oath this Friday, 8th of March. OFCF, three hours of intimacy. On Saturday, 9th of March, Alumni Hall, Campus 1, 10 to 4. No, no. They should be in the youth meeting. 10 to 1. 10 to 1, not 10 to 4. 10 a.m. 1, from 1, find your way to the youth meeting. Daughters of purple, single sisters, you wait after the service at the foreigner stand for a brief meeting for your homecoming program. Mama has cleared you to use the global office. So, wait. There will be no next time. Just do <laughs> On the 9th of March, 11. Safe to serve daughters of purpose. Your program is coming up. Yeah, 9th of March. Now, those of you that have shops in the, in the, in the um, church premise, we're going to have a, a monitoring committee that will move around. If during service any shop is open, that will be the last day you will use that shop. We'll walk you out of that place and lock the shop. During service, no shop should be open. During any service, fire nine, Sunday service, whatever, no shop. Once I take the microphone, lock the shops. And admin, the two admins and the resident pastors, this is the last time I'll make this announcement. I'm not supposed to even make the announcement. We'll close the shop permanently. We'll allow you to take your goods out and we'll close it. The microfinance bank is looking for internal auditors. You have first degree in finance related courses, biz admin, accounting. Make sure you apply. It doesn't matter, just make sure you apply. Um, see the church admin for it. Was in a conglomerate, still have several opportunities. Celebration TV, there's an opportunity for editors. If you are a video editor, you are good in editing, please send your application um, letter to Celebration TV. Volunteers and those who want to be trained also, you can make yourself available. If you have your seat for last Sunday, lift it up. I give an instruction for last Sunday. And an instruction is not a suggestion. An instruction. Your seat for last Sunday. I don't know why you, the choir, you think that you are so close to God that when instructions are given, because I know when instructions are given, you exempt yourself. I'm sure not everybody in the choir will do that. Don't exempt yourself. I give an instruction to hold the seat. Did I? I preached a message last Sunday. In our custom, it's not so. And I give you that there are two things that violate demonic traditions and patterns. Prayer and sacrifice. And I said, come with the seed this Sunday. Lift it above your head. In the name of Jesus, as you have obeyed this instruction, may the benefit of obedience be rested upon you. And also, may evil patterns be shattered permanently. In Jesus' name. Now, cast that on the altar now. Come, cast that on the altar. This is not an offering. It's a sacrifice. Come, cast on the altar and go. Touch the altar with it. Jesuna <laughs> zuela Yesu nazuela kabari Kali bakala di bitsaru Iyo yo kabari Iyo kabari yo Yesu nazuela Kali bakala di bitsaru Iyo yo yo Jesus.
Lift up your offerings. Lift your seat feet. Now, those of us who came late and would not drop our tithe, come cast it on the right hand side. You came late, you've not dropped your tithe, come cast it on the right hand side. All those that made vows, fulfill the vows now, cast on the altar, lift up your seat feet. Those of you coming for the first Sunday, today's your first Sunday, can I see your hand? Today's your first Sunday. As these hands are lifted, Whatever came with you, ushers, don't just stand there with your pink and black. Be useful. Lift up those hands. Whatever came with you as a battle, it ends now. Mountains be brought low, valley be exalted. May God bless you and cause his face to shine on you. Whatever came with you as a question becomes an answer. In Jesus' name. My partners, drop your seed in the bowl. Your offerings and seed feed are blessed. Only those who are partners will cast their seed here. Then those who came late, cast your tithe on the altar. Every other person cast your seed feed as the ushers bring the bowl. is blessed. You never disappoint me. You never blow my mind. Oh. Supernatural God. Oh. Let me say I'm a praise, 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 I'm a pra
Amen. We have a Bible study on Tuesday. Make sure you attend it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you. Be gracious and merciful until you lift up his countenance and give you peace. In Jesus' name. My head is a good head. My life is a good one. And they shall fight for me. Greatness on my side. Goodness shall follow me. No matter what the matter is, somebody say, my time has come. How are you?